we are entering into a new era, the Artemis era of exploration of the moon, where we're going not just once, not just twice, but to establish a permanent presence on the moon. Whether the mission succeeds or landing or not, the mission itself, in my opinion, is an overall success. Chandrayaan, as well as the signing of the Artemis Accords, we're seeing that partnership go beyond Earth orbit to the surface of the moon. It's extraordinarily important, as you say, to the whole world. We are entering into a new era, the Artemis era, of exploration of the moon, where we're going not just once, not just twice, but to establish a permanent presence on the moon. And this mission will gather invaluable data to help drive our understanding of the moon, our ability to utilize resources, and ultimately where we're going to establish settlements on the moon. So this is a vital part of that process. And by the way, whether the mission succeeds or landing or not, the mission itself, in my opinion, is an overall success. That there's already been so much learned, so many capabilities developed, that while it will be great to have a successful landing, there's already been so many accomplishments in India that we will all benefit from, from just the act of attempting the mission. So as always, the journey itself is the most important part of this. And in my mind, this mission has already been a success. Now, NASA and ISRO have collaborated on various space missions and projects in the past. I mean, you worked on these things before, uh, including the satellite launches and scientific research programs. Uh, how will the potential landing of ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 move this collaboration forward? It, it will literally move the collaboration forward to the moon. That right now, a lot of our collaboration with NASA and ISRO is focused on Earth, which is terrific, such as projects such as NISAR, where with India, we're going to have radar systems that will be able to study the Earth and create a lot of vital data to tackle climate change and issues related to our changing climate, which is going to be so important for India, for the US, and for the entire world. With Chandrayaan, as well as the signing of the Artemis Accords, we're seeing that partnership go beyond Earth orbit to the surface of the moon where the next era of both robotic and human space exploration is going to take place. So this is an inflection point moment for the relationship that will establish the stage and what's going to happen for decades to come as India, ISRO, America, and NASA explore the moon together in preparation for eventual work on Mars, which India has already, of course, sent probes to. And, and that's why this partnership is so important, and it's important to grow it from Earth to the Moon and then eventually to Mars. Now, together, the Vikram lander and the Pragyan uh, rover are expected to move uh, India's position forward within a small list of countries that have landed on the Moon. Uh, now, how is the science uh, from these rovers uh, expected to benefit NASA's current Artemis planning and what if any changes are expected in NASA's ISRO's efforts for its planning or for a sustained presence on the moon? To have a sustained presence on the moon or anywhere, you need to be able to live off the land. And that's what's so different about this new era of lunar development that this time we're going to stay. In order to do that, we need to be able to take advantage of the resources on the moon. Not too long ago, we thought the moon was bone dry, no water. Now, we've discovered that the moon has vast resources of water ice that could be taken advantage of to create oxygen, to create rocket fuel. It's a treasure trove of fuel that can sustain development and even missions out further to Mars. So this mission and hopefully future missions by ISRO and NASA will help us to understand what those resources are, where they are, and therefore that will direct planning in terms of how we will develop that presence on the moon and how we can leverage resources to go forward. There have been so few missions to the moon, we actually understand not a lot. So this is a terrific opportunity to enhance our understanding that will draw architecture of Artemis missions and our development of 
in situ resource utilization, using the resources on the moon to create sustainable lunar development and then leverage the moon for historic missions. Now, just this year, when Prime Minister Modi was here, India became a signatory uh, to the Artemis Accord, um, that is, uh, which is set on the principles and guidelines for international cooperation and lunar exploration. Uh, with the potential landing of Chandrayaan-3, how is India's participation in these accords going to influence various aspects of lunar explora exploration and sustainable use of lunar resources? Yeah. India signing the accords was extraordinarily important, and the timing could not have been better relative to the landing of Chandrayaan-3. The accords established principles to ensure that India, the U.S., and the other partner nations create a future of peace, of transparency, of interoperability, creating an environment that's conducive to future development. The Accords are also a preemptive strike against conflict, but at their very heart, the Accords are an attempt to ensure that we have peace on the Moon, Mars, and throughout space development. That's why I'm so grateful for India to have moved forward and for India to not only be a leader in terms of the substantive systems like this lunar mission, but to be a leader in policy, to help ensure that the international treaties that have been signed by India, by the US, the Outer Space Treaty, the Registration Convention, these need to be more than words on paper. And through the Artemis Accords, we all agreed to implement those obligations to create a safe and prosperous future for all of us to be able to enjoy.